tornado sirens. Picture the scene. You're out chilling on your front lawn. There's a tornado watch and all of a sudden, dark clouds roll in. There's an eeriness in the atmosphere. The birds stop chirping. The leaves have turned over. And there's an old lady down the street who claims that there's a pain in her knee, which only comes before severe storms. I felt these pains like this for a long time. And you're looking around, and then all of a sudden, Ah, here we go again. The tornado siren sound. And it's just straight up terrifying. These things sound creepy and scary as f heck. But they sound scary for a reason. They serve an important role in warning you of an impending danger, such as a tornado or an atomic bomb. We'll get to that. Even the shape of these things is scary. I mean, that square horn shape, they look scary. They sound scary. Perhaps that's why they make such great creepypasta internet lore cryptids. Some people absolutely love sirens. Like there are straight up tornado siren fandoms out there, tornado siren enthusiasts out there that travel. Like there's so many YouTube channels about tornado sirens. Some people are absolutely terrified of them, which makes sense. To me, I absolutely love them. I'm all about them. Anyway, we're gonna talk about them. We're gonna talk about their history. We're gonna talk about their future. We're gonna talk about different models, different sounds. We're gonna talk about what I think are the creepiest sounding tornado sirens, AKA civil defense sirens, AKA air raid sirens, because technically, they're not meant for tornadoes. But before we get into any of that, be sure to subscribe for more tornado related content. Let's get in the video. Now, first things first, let's quickly talk about the history of sirens. Back in 1799, a Scottish physicist by the name of John Robison invented the very first siren. His initial intentions were to use his invention for the creation of beautiful music. His device used a high-speed rotating disc with uniformly spaced holes all around it to make noise when a jet of air is propelled through it. Robison's innovation was further improved on in the 1800s by Cagnier de la Tour and Professor Joseph Henry. Here's an example of what Cagnier de la Tour siren sounded like. Fun fact, this siren could also work underwater. Many sirens of the 1800s were steam powered and often used as foghorns for lighthouses. Skipping ahead to the 20th century, we have the oldest still in use siren today. That is the Federal Signal Model 2. Another notable US siren during the 1930s was the Decot siren. A lot of these sirens were used for fires, for other ways to get the public's attention. But at the dawn of World War II, their use would become a little more sinister. In September 1939, London experienced its first air raid siren alert. And during World War II, the use of air raid sirens would become standard. No time now for asking what to do, where to go. But for this video, we want to skip to post-World War II sirens, specifically looking at the U.S. with the Civil Defense Act. After World War II, the subject of civil defense received little attention. That is until 1949 the year the Soviet Union tested its first atomic weapon. Immediately following the test, there was a sense of urgency among the American people and administration to enact safety policies in the event of an attack. As a result, President Harry S. Truman issued an executive order establishing the Federal Civil Defense Administration. This legislation included funding for defensive equipment from the federal government to the states and local communities. Most of the funding went into creating fallout shelters. However, some of the funding went towards installing large outdoor sirens in cities and towns. These sirens would then be used to alert local populations of an incoming atomic bomb. And if you hear it, as you drive in your auto, as you sit in your office, or work at your bench, wherever you are, what will you do? Of course, this channel is about tornadoes, not about nuclear bombs. So why are we talking about nuclear bombs? Well, it was these sirens that were put into place that have become the modern tornado sirens of today. I mean, obviously they've updated some sirens, but the original tornado sirens were all federal civil defense sirens. Okay, but when did they start using sirens with tornado warnings? Well, let's talk about the history of tornado warnings real quick. During the 1880s, Sergeant John P. Finley of the U.S. Signal Corps conducted studies on tornadoes and the circumstances surrounding them. 
Using his observations, Finley started issuing tornado alerts for long periods of time over a wide geographic area, very comparable to the tornado watches we have today. Edward S. Holden created a short-term local tornado warning system based on Finley's research. This idea consisted of telegraph wires around the southwest corner of a town that would snap in strong winds. Alarm bells and a cannon would then automatically sound in the town in the event of a damaged telegraph circuit, which would be uh, terrifying and cool. Local tornado warnings were, however, generally frowned upon by many scientists and experts at the time. For this reason, the actual word tornado was banned, like it was straight up banned. That is until the government began to start worrying about expensive military equipment on military bases located within tornado prone areas. The first official tornado warning occurred in 1948 at Tinker Air Force Base. The first tornado warning was conducted by Major Ernst Fawbush and Captain Robert Miller. A tornado watch was issued at 1450 Central Standard Time and included a warning for Tinker Air Force Base between 1600 and 1800 Central Standard Time. This prompted the base to implement a tornado strategy for damage, mitigation, and employee safety. Around 1800 Central Standard Time, a tornado struck the base, verifying the warning and ushering in the modern era of tornado warnings. The very first use of a civil defense siren to warn a community of an incoming tornado happened on June 11, 1958 in Wichita, Kansas, a day after the infamous El Dorado tornado. However, this was a pretty exceptional event because technically civil defense sirens were not to be used for natural disasters. They are meant strictly for nuclear bombs. The fact that Wichita used those, I'm glad they did. All right, I'm glad they did, but they probably weren't allowed to do so. This means that almost all of the tornado warnings throughout the 50s and the 60s had no tornado sirens to accompany them. That would all change in the 70s when President Richard Nixon's term saw a number of notable natural disasters, specifically Hurricane Camille in 1969. And this led the government to permit dual use of sirens for both atomic attacks and natural disasters. Okay, so what are the different tones, models, and types of sirens? So you have two basic siren designs. You have the electromechanical, aka classic siren design, which has a chopper that spins super fast from an electric motor, which sucks in air through little holes. Then you have electronic sirens that are literally like electric speakers, like that you have in stadiums and places like that. So let's talk about some different siren alerts and what they mean. There's the alert sound, which is just a steady increased This is typically used for tornadoes, at least historically speaking, it's been used for tornadoes and other natural disasters. And then there's the attack tone, which is, it goes up and down, back and forth. It sounds a little bit like this. So while the first one went, the other one goes, In a rare instance, there's a high-low sound, which is sometimes used for fires, but can be used for other purposes. Sounds like this. And then there's the creepiest of all of them, the alternating wail, which kind of mixes the high-low with the attack mode, and it sounds like this. easily the creepiest sound of all of them. And we'll talk more about that later. All right, let's talk about some siren tones. First off, you have a single tone siren, which can be at different pitches, but it sounds like this. There's also something called a dual tone siren, and these are a little more familiar and a little more creepy. Here's what a dual tone siren sounds like. Comparing that back to the single tone.
hear the difference? Okay. Okay, now dual tones can have different pitch intervals depending on different ports. Have a listen. Can you hear the different pitch intervals? To me, the 810 sounds creepier. It's just got this like slightly angelic, but slightly scary vibe to it. Okay, and when you're in an area, usually there's multiple sirens, sometimes different models. So you're not just getting one siren, you're getting like a couple sirens that are rotating around, little Doppler effect action, creating different pitches and noises, and it all adds up to this really kind of eerie atmosphere. So here are some famous electromechanical siren models. Okay, first off, we're gonna talk about the OG civil defense siren, the one from the early 50s, developed between 1949 and 1952. That is the Federal Signal Thunderbolt siren. Siren enthusiasts love this, and so do I. I mean, it looks, it looks pretty sweet, and it sounds pretty cool too. Let's have a listen. There are three different models of this. There's the 1000 single tone model, the 1000T dual tone, and the 1003, which can do that alternating well. So that's the Thunderbolt. Other notable mechanical federal sirens include the 2T-22, the 3T-22, the STH-10, and the 2001 model. The 2001 model is very, very common in like modern towns. It's still electromechanical, it's not electronic. Another noteworthy brand is the Alerting Communicators of America, or ACA. They have a few different electromechanical siren designs. The most notable are the Alerter, the Cyclone, the Hurricane, the Penetrator, and the Screamer. Moving on to Electric. My favorite electric siren is definitely the Federal Signal Modulator. These have also been called the Chicago Siren and the Scary Tornado Siren. The reason why they're called that is these have the ability to create that alternating whale sound that I talked about earlier in the video. People think they sound creepy, and they definitely do sound pretty creepy, but they sound pretty sweet as well. Two other electric models I want to talk about are the Whelan Vortex and the Whelan WPS series. So another thing that can make electric sirens scarier than electromechanical sirens is the fact that you can use a recorded voice with these. So sometimes it'll be going off, and all of a sudden you'll, it'll be like, Take shelter now. kind of adds you know i mean it's not that scary but i don't know if you have a favorite civil defense siren be sure to throw it in the chat in the comments i mean by chat okay so let's talk about the future of tornado sirens there are many amongst today's community that find the tornado sirens to be well not really useful anymore since we live in the age of cell phones and technology and applications we can easily get alerts on our phones for this reason many believe that tornado sirens are redundant but redundancy, in my opinion, is a good thing when we're talking about people's lives, all right? Sometimes people are sleeping, yo. Okay, I personally keep my cell phone on silent, and I'm definitely not alone. I know other people that do this as well. So for those people, you want some tornado sirens. So it's of my opinion that we should keep these around for as long as possible. Plus, I love them. The outside tornado siren system is not without its flaws, though. First off, many communities lack outdoor sirens particularly those in small towns and rural areas. Currently, the NOAA weather radio is the preferred choice for an in-home warning system. So there you have it. Tornado sirens, they are very cool. Thanks for watching. Oh, check out the studio. What? It's looking pretty sick. I'm still trying to figure out the lighting and the shelves are <laughs> clearly empty. Don't know what to put on the shelves. I need to put some like tornado stuff up there. Some maybe a little picture of Ted Fujita in the, in the corner. Anyway, 